So I, I, you want me to do this now? Are you yeah. gonna cut? You're gonna cut, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Snippets. Ah, that's fine, and I can screw up. That's okay. Videos only as snippets. Okay. So hi, I'm Arne van Oostrom, and you are listening to Gut Talks, double G U double T. Cool. So, <laughs> say you can't do anything, and you you don't know how to do anything. Let's assume this nothing. is what you do, right? Nothing, absolutely nothing, I zero, just talk. right? <laughs> I talk. Exactly. Okay. And then you are the expert in the room. So whatever yeah. you say yeah. and everything you said that you don't know, that is so is weird. Out of Listen, your mind. That is so weird. Listen, I had a moment when I was I was speaking at a conference. Listen, I, I'll tell you something that most people don't know. Um, the way my career kind of started with design thinkers. So I left my agency that was a communication design agency. I was the creative director and I was, I was fed up with uh, sort of this, sort of uh, being the last in the sort of the, the, the kind of the, the process of, of getting a product to market or a message out to the public. So the, the company would come up with a solution, an idea, and then the designers would kind of put a nice ribbon around it or, you know, do the aesthetics, basically, just a really superficial stuff. And I was really fed up because I thought, you know, first of all, if this is not, it's totally not meaningful. And uh, I think I can add value in the beginning of the process when there's still, uh, you know, when there's still problems. So I, I kind of, you know, I left my company, there's, some other reasons, uh, some disagreements and stuff. And I've, I'm going to start an, my own company with design thinkers. And I, nobody knew what that was. And I, I gave my own kind of interpretation. And I, we were going to do service design because that kind of just started to bubbling to the service, which is really interesting. But I, nobody knew who I was. Nobody knew in the sort of this kind of space of innovation and creativity. And I had no clue how to uh, get sort of on a stage and to start talking about what I do. So, uh, but Twitter started happening in 2006, seven-ish, I think. And then, so that was my kind of little engine of getting kind of uh, connecting to people, et cetera, et cetera. So I got to know quite a few people, <laughs> which was interesting. So, but okay, uh, long story, but I'll keep it, try to keep it story short. So I started a community called the Nonofsky was sort of a, a community of a diverse group of creative people, basically. That was the idea. Later, that became Design Thinkers Network. But at that time, it was called uh, Vinovsky because I thought it should sound a bit like, what is that? You know, and I like the ski, F ski. I thought that should be in a W. I had to have a W because you know, like, it's a good letter to start a word with. <laughs> Vinovsky. And I imagined this guy, Robert Vinovsky. Anyway, the, the logo was a shepherd, a dog, German shepherd with a star on his tongue. It was totally nonsense, but because it was, it was, I don't know, whatever. That was my thing. And I, I had these kind of uh, 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 mini unconferences. And that was basically just a bunch of friends getting together and then saying on Twitter, hey, we have a mini con conference on design thinking. And people were like, wow, I wish I was there. And we was like, just three of us <laughs> having a beer. But you don't know, you weren't there. So it, you know, so it was fake it till you make it kind of a thing. Like, but it was real. I mean, we got together, we talked about it, and then that group became bigger. So I um at one point I I said on Twitter, I'm gonna be uh I'm gonna be in New York City. Um, and I'm going to uh, start, I'm gonna run a uh, um, a Vinovsky Minion conference in New York City because I knew that if you want to be sort of a name in anything, uh, you have to kind of, if you then people know you in New York City, in the Netherlands, this is the way. You're, if, you, if you've done anything in New York City, you're like, oh, you've been in New York City, you must be really cool, right? It's, like, it's very dumb, but that's, it, I thought that's how it works. So I said, I'm going to be in New York City and do, uh, uh, anyway. So um, someone I knew on Twitter from Parsons New School said, oh, um, we're going to have a session on the future of Parsons New School design curriculum, strategic design. When are you going to be in New York City? I said, when is the session? He said, well, it's in, um, what was it, uh, February or something. I said, well, isn't that a coincidence? It's exactly when I'm going to be in New York City. So I booked the tickets. <laughs> and I, I love and I, it. I love and it. I, <laughs> and I went to New York City. <laughs> Cameron, uh, is, uh, if, you're, if you're listening, I don't think he knew this. Uh, anyway, I went to New York City and Bruce Nussbaum was at that time was one of the big names in design thinking. He was sort of, uh, you know, him and 
uh, uh, people from from IDEO and uh, so anyway, uh, D school folks. So he was kind of big mm -hmm. name in that in that space. Um, he taught at uh, Parsons. So he he asked me, oh, do you want to kind of come into my class and maybe teach uh, 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 um, you know something in my class about this? And I, so first of all, I just started this. I my experience was near to zero. Right. But I had a lot of dialogues and conversation on Twitter and I had an opinion, but I hadn't done anything yet. I was a designer from a, from another world, basically. Anyway, so I said, OK, I'll, I'll come in and uh, to your class, which is great. OK, I'm in New York City. So also, I said to to the folks from these from the uh, Parsons, I said, well, do you have a space? so I can run this on conference. And they said, oh yeah, well, you can use the space. So all of a sudden I have my mini on conference at Parsons New School, you know, at the design, strategic design faculty or something, which would sound in New York City. That sounds really awesome. <laughs> like, like, well, that's really cool. I thought that's already cool. I went there, it was a snowstorm, a blizzard, school closed, uh, no teaching. So I did go to one of his classes, but then the day after I was just, there was snow and I was there for a week. Uh, so nothing happened. I did do the um, mini conference and we had the session, but the, the, and the, but the session was the first day I was there. First day I was there. I had the session and there were people from IEO, Bruce Nussbaum was there. Uh, there were a whole bunch of people. Uh, my, it's a lot of my heroes, basically. Uh, Roger Martin was there, who is one of the, you know, one of the big names in, in design thinking and, and uh, stuff like that. He wrote some cool books. I, I, and he said to me, I know you from Twitter. I said, you know me from Twitter? What are you talking about? <laughs> like, okay. Anyway, so I'm there in the session and I, on the plane, I prepared... So, I mean, really thought, what am I going to say in this session? What is my opinion? What do I have? It turns out that I was probably the only one who really gave it a really good thought because I was like, I have to say something. So I had a whole theory, nothing brilliant, but I think I had something with the three C's or something. So I was in the session. The next day, Bruce Nussbaum wrote a, a blog post quoting me completely. Oh, my, everything I said, RNF Nostrom said this, of the future of blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so basically then there was a blizzard and I thought, well, it doesn't matter. I can go home now. So I came back to the Netherlands and the first thing was I got asked to speak at a conference. I uh, like, oh, can you, you want to do a keynote at a conference? <laughs> okay. So I'm at the, and so again, long story, I, this is the end. Uh, I am at the conference. I'm sitting there the day before the conference was sort of a speaker's dinner as they as as they do and i was sitting next to a few other keynote speakers and there was a lady who would announce me to the audience who would, would be kind of the host and she talks to all the speakers like how i'm going to kind of uh you know announce you, you know, what's your story and so she talks to me she asked me so uh you know and so what's your thing and and uh, and i said i really you know seriously i don't really know anything because i i never said any i never i don't want to be the expert so i i literally said listen i just I really don't know anything. I like to start, which is nice because I like to be open. And I'm, I'm actually, I like starting with, you know, not, not, nothing, but I, you know, I, I so I, I really told her a little bit that story of, uh, and she said to me, uh, oh, that's so vulnerable. That's so great. That's so awesome that you kind of, yeah, I get what you're saying. Like that's, you know, that mindset is so important. And I was like, okay. And the guy next to me, one of the keynote speakers, he looked at me and said, you can just say anything, can you? He's like, whatever you say. He's like, people are like, oh yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? I I haven't done anything yet. It's a bit like people want to see things in you that are not there, uh, which I I thought was fascinating. I got people asking me to come to conferences or to teach at schools because they like my work so much. And I was like, I haven't done anything yet. And if I did it, I didn't tell anyone. So how do you know, You're right? So, and then you become a person because then you spoke at a conference and yeah. someone talked about you. And because you, and then the other conferences are, they want, and the conference makes you look really cool because they want to have cool people. So if you're at a conference, they say, this is an awesome person, so important. And you're like, really? Because so, the conference wants important people. So they'll make you more important than you are. And then et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And here we are. And now I'm here. Cool. Sorry, right. long story. No, no, I like it. It's always interesting to know, you know, behind the scenes, what happens in, what happened in your brain, what happened really, yep. and stories that, you know you don't hear about probably every day and you said there's part of it that you just shared 
here. I never, yeah, I don't so, think I've ever, ever told anyone except for my friends and because, you know, who do you tell? But I mean, no, it is, but that mechanism of, um, uh, I mean, so there's so many, there's so much in there in that little ne mechanism of, you know, uh, you, you are on a stage, you're doing these things. And so, and, and uh, I, I'm by, it, it created a space for me where I could actually just be myself yeah. um, and be genuine. I mean, when I say I don't, you know, I, I'm insecure and I, uh, I, I, I actually turn into something that I think was really important that you can be yourself. And if you're nervous, you're nervous. If you don't know what you're doing, tell, say, do you don't know what you're doing? Why pretend to be someone else? And, um, and, and that, that turned out to be something that people said, wow, that's so cool. <laughs> it's like, oh, really? Because <laughs> uh, to me, it was a bit of a, okay, but I couldn't do anything else because I was so used to being an outsider. I was so comfortable with being the school dropout and I'm so comfortable. I have never been asked to be the expert in anything. So, uh, you know, now I'm the anti-expert. <laughs>